Real quick, I wanted to let y'all know we now have a join button under the videos next to the subscribe button. If you want to submit questions for Q&A videos like this, connect with the community, or even just support the channel, this is a great way to do it. And even if you don't want to, at least go over and look at my tears. I thought they were hilariously funny, and I had to uh, ask my husband to tell me that I was funny. Uh, so, okay, video, bye. <laughs> y'all remember in a recent video when we asked ChatGPT to help me deliver my wife's baby and teach me how to do a C-section? And then most importantly, I asked it to do my job as a YouTube doctor and tell me some content ideas of videos that I should make. Remember how I asked y'all, what would a truly bizarre gynecology question that you would want answered be? Because I was fairly confident that I, a board certified gynecologist, would find nothing bizarre because I had heard it all. Nope. Y'all sailed right past bizarre and delivered to me the most unhinged gynecologic questions I have ever seen. But fair warning, some of these will haunt your nightmares. Cassie Wood said, all right, here's the most bizarre gynecologic question I could think of. Let's say you're early pregnant with twins and you only want a singleton. Is there a way that you can encourage one twin to absorb the other? Unlike sand tiger sharks, we as humans cannot exactly encourage our embryos and fetuses to cannibalize each other, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who's asking the question and why, I guess. On a serious note, there is a procedure called selective fetal reduction, which is typically used in higher order multiples to decrease the number of embryos that someone is carrying in order to reduce their risk of very serious complications or of losing all of them through miscarriage or very early delivery. Speaking of, if you haven't seen the higher order multiples video, it is very good and you should subscribe so that you can go find it after you watch this one. Epix00 says, the most bizarre gynecological questions as per ChatGPT. Can I use glitter as a lubricant during intercourse? No, that is the opposite of lubricant. I would say that is a friction can, a friction can. That's the official term. Is it possible to get pregnant from swimming in a pool or hot tub? No. Can I give birth underwater in my bathtub? You can do anything you put your mind to, my friend. Is it normal to have cravings for non-food items like dirt or chalk? This is called pica and it is associated with severe anemia and is something that you should definitely bring up with your doctor or advanced practice provider. Can I use a vacuum cleaner to induce labor at home? Philippians 413, I guess, but I'm going to be real honest. I have no idea what the thought process with this is. Are they asking if they can vacuum out the... I don't, I, I'm going, I could, why? We'll just move on. How can I make my baby's umbilical cord into a keepsake jewelry? I don't think that this is my personal specialty. Maybe you should ask Etsy that one. Is it safe to give myself a bikini wax while pregnant? It probably won't kill you. Oh, no guarantees. Can I use food coloring to dye my vaginal discharge for a themed party? Just because you can? doesn't mean you should. And also, what kind of parties are you going to, my friend? Because they are way more exciting than any party I have ever been invited to. Can I use a tampon to clean my ears? I guess that depends on how big your ear holes are. Is it normal to have a fishy smell coming from my vagina after eating seafood? Nope, that is not normal. And fishy odor can be a sign of a bacterial infection. So take your vagina to the doctor. Ashley Victoria says, I do have a bizarre question. I asked my teacher this when I was eight or nine and she laughed at me and I've been thinking about it ever since. I'm 25 now. Could we determine someone's blood type using a menstrual sample? Purse, I can't believe that you are still thinking about this nearly two decades later and I'm honestly kind of sad for you and the state of our education system that your teacher would laugh at you for this honestly very good question and not just answer it. But here we are, and I've got great news. I, I can answer it for you. Yes, you can definitely tell someone's blood type via menstrual blood. In fact, you can get a whole DNA profile from somebody via menstrual blood. Usually, when you're doing a test for blood type, you want the sample not to coagulate, which means, like, clump together like you would want it to if it was, you know, bleeding out of a wound. 
you, the platelets. You, you guys know what that means. Okay, I don't have to. Yeah, you got it. This would probably not be the most efficient or practical way to check somebody's blood type, but it certainly is possible. Jay Newcomb says, the most bizarre gynecological question, if someone is abducted by aliens and receives a vaginal probe, do they need to see their ob gyne when they return or will over-the-counter yeast medication as a prophylactic be enough, presuming more serious symptoms didn't occur? You got me. That is a bizarre gynecologic question that has quite literally never crossed my mind. Not once, not thinking of things, not in my office, not someone talking to me drunken at a party. So round of applause for, for your creativity. I think covering just for yeast would be a bit short-sighted. I'm thinking that we won't know how to prevent alien sexually transmitted infections because who knows how they're sterilizing those vaginal probes, you know, between probings. But we should probably cover for human sexually transmitted infections, just in case that they picked someone else up who hadn't been having safe sex. That, and then I guess we also don't really know how alien reproduction occurs, so we might want to cover for pregnancy as well, maybe a plan B. I don't know. What kind of question is this? The second half of this question was a video idea, periods in space. Does a weightless environment affect your menstrual cycle? There actually is enough history and interesting commentary on this topic to make all video, and I will put it on the list because I agree that might be a really fun video to make. Do y'all remember the story of, I think it was like in 1989 or 83 or something, Sally Ride was the first American female astronaut going to space. And they asked her, the NASA engineers asked her if she would need around 100 tampons for her single lunar menstrual cycle. They were going to be gone for approximately one week. Princess Claire XO says, would love for you to make a video regarding how mucinex can increase fertility, explaining if it's true or not. I've been seeing it all over the internet lately and I'm curious to hear your input. Mucinex or guaifenesin is a expectorant. So most people take it to loosen up mucus in their lungs if they've been ill. One of the ways that it works is by decreasing viscosity or thickness of mucus in the respiratory tract. Some data, not a plethora of data, but some data, does indicate that it may have a potentially positive impact on fertility, particularly in people who may have cervical infertility factors or unexplained infertility or who are on certain ovulation induction medications. But again, the data is a bit sparse, but I've seen actual reproductive endocrinologists recommend this occasionally. Leona Carpenter says, ob guy question. Some babies are born with a lot of hair. Have you ever found it tangled around baby or in hairballs? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all really just did a stand-up job coming up with some interesting and bizarre questions. Unfortunately, I am sorry to disappoint. I have never seen a stray hair in the amniotic fluid or placenta or at the time of delivery. Maybe someone else out there has, though. Do y'all remember when I said some of these will haunt your nightmares? This is the one. So you might want to skip forward to the next one if, if you are bothered by insects. Yep. I says... Bizarre question. If a cockroach crawled up in my vagina somehow, would I feel it inside me? How far up could it go on its own? Would my body try to give birth to it or get rid of it? Or would it just rot in my vagina and uterus and leave me dead or damaged? Because cockroaches are impossible to kill nearly, how long would it take for the cockroach to die? I'm literally so freaked out about this because I saw a video on Instagram. Please make a short about this. <laughs> Y'all... When I tell you, I was horrified because I googled this and it turns out this has happened or a poor gynecologist out there who shouldn't be existing has lied about it on the internet. I don't know. I hope it's the latter, but I kind of think it's not. As far as the questions, I don't know if you would feel it. Apparently, this person felt it or knew something was going on but didn't know what it was when they went to have it checked out. The good news is it couldn't get any further than the vagina. So if you look at this model, so you have vagina there, right? And then the clear part shows into that. And the cervix is right here, it would not be able to go past the cervix. And the cervix, when you are not having a baby or have something else going on, is closed off to the rest of the world. It is permeable to liquid-like blood during menstruation, but I would imagine that you couldn't get like an insect inside the uterus. I'm afraid to Google that. I have never heard of that happening, and I want to tell you that it can't happen. So vaginas, as far as it could get. 
That is my professional opinion. I don't know how long it would stay alive. It sounds like the person in this story had a live one in there for a while. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm talking about this. Uh, you can read the article. I'll link it below if you want. I don't know that I've done anything to quell your fears. The upside is that I have talked with many, many, many gynecologists over the years, and I've seen them discuss things found in vaginas more times than I can count, and it has never been an insect. I've never had somebody say that that was the thing. Like, I've heard everything from potatoes to lost tampons to condoms to sex toys to things that aren't sex toys were being used as sex toys to various other foods and garlics and almost anything you can imagine, but an insect has never been it, at least not an accidental living thing. So I would say extremely unlikely to happen to you, but uh, I am also now scarred. So thank you for bringing us all in on this scarring imaginative journey. Heather Cole says, can you go over cervical tears during birth? Someone I know on Instagram actually gave birth through the tear instead of the dilation, which she heard is exceedingly rare. Cervical tears can happen. They're pretty unusual, but we do see them. I think the incidence is about one in 2,000 births, maybe. Generally, when you think about it, it's not like you tear a hole in the cervix. I need something to use as an example. Let's see. I'm sacrificing this wrapping paper roll for y'all, so you're welcome. This is actually a fairly good representation of the cervix. Dilation is as it gets bigger this way, and effacement or thinning is as it gets shorter this way. When someone has a cervical tear, it's not a hole like that in the cervix that the baby comes through. I don't even know how that would happen. What usually is being referred to with a cervical laceration, it would be like a tear like that. Does that make sense? So it's a tear up the side and then you sew it closed. They can be really bad. They can bleed really, really heavily and are the cause of some percentage of postpartum hemorrhages because the cervix is highly vascular and it bleeds a lot. We can usually stitch them closed. The biggest risk factor for a cervical laceration is having had a cerclage at some point during the pregnancy, although it can happen even with no risk factors. Arrow Walker says, okay, bizarre gynecology question. When the fetus of a marsupial is navigating from the uterus to the pouch, why is it still considered a fetus? I know it's about non-human animals, but I think it still qualifies. Interestingly, I had to look this up, and according to my very valid source of Wikipedia, I actually think once it's born that it is no longer referred to as a fetus after that. At least in the Wikipedia article, it called it a fetus-like neonate or newborn in comparison to humans. It's like a human fetus, but it is a newborn. It seems like they stopped calling them fetus at the point that they migrate out of the vagina and into the pouch to attach to a nipple and grow from there. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then check out this video, which I react to some animal births, including a marsupial, and uh, it's something. Tavia Squire says, why are there instances of cis guys presenting with endometriosis? Yeah, endometriosis is a really interesting but somewhat still poorly understood entity. And you're right, there are some instances of people who were born biologically male presenting with histologically confirmed endometriosis. Most of them had severe liver cirrhosis, which can drastically alter estrogen levels or some other kind of hormone-altering medication that they were taking. But I would say overall, we do not know for sure why this can happen or exactly how it happens. It's very rare, but I don't think we've completely lined out everything we need to know about this topic. All right, well, that was fascinating, truly. I cannot reiterate enough how much I feel lucky to have been exposed to that one insect question. Hello darkness, my old friend. Subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss valuable information like can a cockroach get stuck in your vagina? And I will see you next Monday.